me a uh, give a test real quick. Just like talk. Greetings, listeners, to Synthetic Love Episode One. Uh, today we're going to be looking at diet sodas, uh, particularly the artificial sweeteners uh, that are contained in them. Um, I'm here joined with my two friends, Tyler and Hector, two very educated, well-respected men. Happy to be here. Okay. Kick off the first season. And uh, right off the bat, guys, what have you guys heard about diet soda? I know you've talked about it with your mom, your classmates, seen it all over social media. I mean, honestly, it was always just kind of just the understanding of, like, pick and choose your poison. Like, you want real sugar, you want fake sugar. You know? We know sugar is correlated with diseases such as diabetes, as well as cancer, as well as tooth decay, and a bunch of other nonsense, which we will be getting into. It's pick and choose your poison. You know, one okay, has to thing, It's just, like, it's more like a set you good, or, you know, like, of course, like, diets. Like, there was some, like, you know... Zero sugars, zero calories. Without knowing anything about it. Exactly. So, even if they do have the gradients, they don't, of course, like nobody's going to raise the gradients. They're just going to assume, like, okay, it's diet, it's good for me. So that's what we're going to look at tonight. Today, we're going to be looking over some uh, research papers that have come out, and we're going to address some of the rumors. Uh, we're also going to talk about what aspartame is, and we're actually going to try to implicate it into how athletes could use it for their benefit. All right. So, according to the PubMed, so the research article coming out in 2019, they kind of looked over 10 individuals appearing in countries that actually claim that there is actually a 30% increased risk of stroke in people who drink more than two diet sodas a day, See, which is very concerning. 30%. Risk, 30%. Increased risk of stroke in people who drink more than two diet sodas a day. Wow. See, okay. Crazy headline. I feel like... I feel like they would be on the news everywhere if that was the case. Like, they would take Diet Cokes and everything off the market. I feel like this is kind of like a perfect example of, like, headline culture, you know? This is a, this is a great example of headline culture. And um, if people were to actually read the article, you'll find that the authors are very transparent about the fact that these findings that they're talking about uh, related to the 30% increased risk of stroke is all observational. They themselves say that they cannot deem diet soda as a causality to an increased risk of stroke. Um, more of an observational finding. There are holes in the research. Like, okay, for yeah, so, like, what you were just saying, the study admits that, you know, lifestyle factors are not even included. So, exactly. so how are you going to say that, because I drink two of these, I am at... Uh, 30% yeah. increased risk of stroke. Yeah. Absolutely not. Whereas, I'm eating, you know, three Big Macs, Tyler, three video games. Yeah, he's t you know? Tyler's a very fit individual. There are other people who are leaning towards... Uh, the diet sodas because they already have underlying health issues. They such are diabetics. Such as diabetics, such as people who don't lead active lifestyles and are like, hey, I want an easy way to lose weight. I'm going to reach for the diet sodas using the artificial sweeteners. But does that mean that artificial sweeteners are the bad guy? I just feel like this, this article specifically is kind of rehashed from stuff we've already seen. This brings little to the table. Nothing new has really been discovered about aspartame or any other artificial sweetener. Uh... You know, we definitely need to focus on something more that has, like, whole hard research. But it's only a correlation, not a causation. So, so that's a really this does not equal 30% risk of stroke. That is not true. That is not... Not according to, the, to that research, yeah, not including the, the 10 individual European countries. So, I mean, concerning the, the big thing about this aspartame itself, this stuff is found everywhere. Yeah, right? let's talk about it. Let's talk about yeah. it. So, you know, it says here that... Hector, do you want to tell us about the, uh, yeah. the background of aspartame, like where, we, where you could find it or how common it is? So, more of the background of the aspartame. So, it's kind of demonstrated that those diet sodas are actually properly used for aspartame. But think about this. They're actually incorporated more into 6,000 products, including soft drinks, dessert mixes, frozen desserts, yogurts, chewable multivitamins, and also breakfast cereals. Right. Which it actually has over... 600 pharmaceutical products. Just think about it. A small can so of medicine. Even medicines have aspartame. Over 600 pharmaceutical products are using aspartame. Honestly, I, I mean, I knew aspartame was in a lot. I had no clue it was actually in that many products. Like, that's um, actually crazy to think about. It is Everything crazy to think about. Too, it's too. crazy to think about because we often see aspartame as some type of experimental, you know, foreign nonsense that was built yeah. in a faraway land. Uh, when in reality, a lot of the metabolites are actually found naturally in foods. So here are some foods that are uh, they're naturally found in. Milk has approximately six times more phenylalanine and 13 times more aspartic acid than the same volume of one diet soda. 
Uh, similarly, tomato juice has six times more methanol than an equivalent volume of a single can of diet soda. So, I mean, check this so like the metabolites from aspartame can actually be found in milk and tomato juice. Actually, milk and tomato juice have more of the metabolites than uh, aspartame does. I think about this though, it's, like, it's more like a daily life, especially with all the products like breakfast cereals and also frozen desserts. Like, this is more like an everyday thing. Absolutely. So Cancer.org is even stating uh, aspartame safe and has statements from both the FDA and European... Uh, we European have a quote here, safety yeah. authority, and I quote: "Studies do not suggest an increased risk associated with aspartame consumption for leukemia, brain tumors, or a variety of cancers, including brain, lymphatic, and hemiopoietic for blood cancers." Correct. Um, I also have this excellent research uh, study here that pits against two groups, two groups of 300 participants. Uh, each group was trying to lose weight. One group of the 300 participants drank two cans of diet soda a day. The other one could only drink water. So nothing else changed, by the way. No, no other training regimen or other dietary changes. Everything else was the same. I got my money on water. Okay. As someone would, right? Um, so after about 12 weeks or three months, uh, the water group lost 4% of their body weight. But the diet soda group actually lost six percent of their body weight, and a year a year later they reevaluated uh, all the participants, and they found that the diet soda group kept off five percent more weight than those who drank the water. So why is that important? Really? Because they kept the weight yeah, off. Yeah, they kept the weight off. You don't want to just diet down for a show or for uh, that vacation. You want to change your lifestyle permanently. So this they reevaluated huh. them a year later. It um, was over a year. Correct. Wow. So, uh, good looks. Cancer.org has deemed aspartame safe with that lovely quote that you just gave us. And there actually hasn't been any consistent evidence whatsoever um, saying that aspartame is harmful. So, I mean, really, athletes can even use this to their advantage, too. Athletes can use this to their benefit. This is especially important because this is statistically significant. This, these aren't just small numbers. When they were reevaluated, the participants kept 5%. More, more weight off than the water group. Okay, so that means that if a person was roughly 200 pounds, 5% off of that would mean that they kept off approximately 10 pounds, which is huge. Yeah, that's massive. So it looks like they even got their blood work done as well. So the diet soda group also had uh, an indication in a drop of uh, cardiovascular disease, lower blood pressure, and lower triglycerides. <clears throat> they also found that the diet soda group had higher secretions of a hormone called leptin, which actually uh, makes you feel less hungry, more satisfied. So that's probably contributing to the additional weight loss. I would say so. Leptin makes you feel more satiated. So we, we could say that the water group experienced the opposite and had a hormone called ghrelin uh, take part in their dietary nature. So they probably were reaching for more snacks and they were unable to keep the weight off. Um, I'm going to read a quote right up from the study. And before I even start reading it, NNS beverages stands for not naturally sweetened. Here it goes, quote, in conclusion, among participants enrolled in a comprehensive weight loss program, regular users of NNS beverages who were asked to consume NNS beverages lost significantly more weight and maintained significantly greater weight losses over one year than subjects asked to stop NNS beverage consumption and consume water alone. These results provide support for the use of NNS beverages as a tool to help with weight loss and maintenance, end quote. Uh, so that concludes... It does its job. It does its job. Yeah, that's, that's how you do it. That concludes our presentation tonight. Thank you I'm so Jonathan. much for tuning in, folks. I'm Jonathan. I'm Hector. Tyler. And uh, thank you so much for listening. Awesome. See you later, guys. Okay. Three, two. All right. So a little more of the... Oh. Sorry. We're good. We're yeah. good. All right. So a little more of the back... This is edited. I could just yeah. edit this whole part out. <laughs> All right, guys. So more. Yeah. yeah. Wait. Should we? Should we kind of like go over yeah. this and like? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I was just gonna let you do your thing until you wanted to cut it. Like. Okay. Group B. So one group actually for group A, they put them drink, make them drink two cans a day, while the other group, which is group B, on make them drink water. Dude, you know how it be, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like cardiac arrest. <laughs> this is indicative of a, a aspartame making you. <laughs> 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 we could say that the 
we can say that the water group experienced the opposite and they lost. Have a really good have a really good quote quote here. Um, hold up. Have a really great quote here from NCBI. Um, and they basically I'm not even gonna use my words, I'm gonna let their use Okay, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> you take your cock out and all like <laughs> Okay, because, yeah, I, I skipped the part where this is statistically significant. Yeah. You want to redo it? This one? Let's redo yeah. it. You know, it says here that... Hector, do you want to tell us about the uh, yeah. the background of aspartame, like, where we, where you could find it or how common it is? Actually, I do not have the research, but I can look up right now. Do you, do you... All right, it's cool. Yeah, no, it's all right. It's all right. We, got, we, we got what we needed. 